Angular 19.2 is bringing us HTTP resource and one of the biggest questions being asked is does it really support the HTTP interceptors and the answer is yes and I'm going to show you how to make that work in this particular video. Hey everyone my name is Mohammed Asanayas I'm a Google developers expert in Angular and also author of two worldwide published Angular books and here my job is to make you a smarter and better Angular developer. With that said let's get into it. For this video we are looking at an example of an app with HTTP resource and if you have not watched the video you can see it right there and the code repository of this particular project can be found in the description of this video and in the previous video we worked with a branch named start this one has a different branch it's called feet slash http interceptor and you need to check out this branch and you can do that by first cloning the repository then going and saying git check out feed slash and here you can say http dash interceptor once you do so you will be at the same exact position where i am right now and we can start working on it and you can follow along now make sure that you have installed the packages by running npm install and when you run npm start you will see something like this which will start the application on localhost 4200 and you will be able to see the exact same application just like this now for this example when we look at the network tab you're going to see that whenever we change our user we get the to do's of that particular user for example when i click here and let's disable this so if I go here, you can see each user's to do's are being loaded when we click on them. If you go to network, you can actually see the network requests here as well. For example, if I go with the first one, you will see that we make a to do's call and you will also see that here the URL becomes json placeholder.typico.com slash user slash one slash to do's. And this changes if you change the user. So if I click here, you can see that here the ID going is two. In our hypothetical example, I want to create an HTTP interceptor, which will add some request headers, essentially one request header, which will send the user's ID in a particular header right here. So let's create that HTTP interceptor. You would want to go to your VS code or your terminal wherever you're basically running a project. And once you're there, you can essentially run ng generate interceptor just like this. And then you will give a path. For me, I'm going to say interceptors. So this creates a folder. And then I'm going to say here that this is going to be user ID interceptor. Just hit enter. And then this will create a folder as well as the interceptor as a function. And there we go. If I open interceptors here, you can see that that we have the user ID interceptor right here. And if we look into it, this essentially is an HTTP interceptor function. Now, in order for us to actually register this particular interceptor, you need to go to app config. And in here we have provide HTTP client here. We can go and say with interceptors just like this. And you can see we import this from Angular common HTTP. And here we need to provide an array. So in the array, we are going to basically get the user ID interceptor just like this. And that's pretty much it. Now our interceptor is registered. If I save this and go to my user ID interceptor here, I can essentially just log the request. So here I can say console log and here we can just log the request just like this. Now, if I go to my application and go to console, you can see all the requests are being logged here. If I clear this, click this again, you can see that this is the HTTP request that went. You can see the headers within it. You can see the method. You can also see the URL right here as well. And you can see the body, etc. So all of these things are here. And whenever you make a particular call, it is going to log that here as you can see. Now to add the header only on the request we are talking about, we are going to look at the URL. URL. So here you can see that we are essentially making the request which ends with to do's. So we are going to basically take that. So I'll go here and I'll say if we have the request dot URL and it ends with slash to do's, which is what we are looking for, then we are going to do something right here. So what do we want to do here? We want to add the headers. So here I'm going to make a clone of the request. So req equals and here I can say req dot clone. So we are cloning the request, but we are going to set the headers here. So we are going to say headers and in the headers, I'm going to say req dot headers dot set when you mouse over this you're going to notice that this set method essentially returns back the http headers which is what we are setting right here so essentially i can go here and say something like user dash id if you want to call it like this a lot of people do something like this x user id and then i can take the user id here now to get the user id i want to look at how the application is structured and you can watch the previous video to see how i coded it but in short if i go to my services which is essentially the to do service whenever we click a particular user we set this particular signal so this signal contains the active user so i can essentially get the user's id from this to do service for that what i'll do here is i'm going to go ahead and say const to do service equals inject and here we can say to do service and then i am going to get out the user id so here i can say const user id equals to do service and here i'm going to say dot user and then id now i want to make sure that i only do all of this when the user id exists so i'm going to check it right here so and user id then i can go ahead and provide the user id here now when we're setting the headers we set the values as strings whereas the user id is a number or undefined so i'm going to convert this to to string and that's pretty much it now once we have this situation done 
this next request will handle it with this request clone so let's test it out now if you refresh now you're going to see that when we look at users and go all the way down we don't really see x user id right here but if i go to to do's and if i go to the bottom you can see here we have x dash user dash id which is right now set to one so this is what we wanted and we can see if i click another user and another user and another user this to do's has the x user id set to two if i click the other one this one has three and if i click this one then we have four so whatever user we are clicking it essentially gets the user id of that particular user via the http interceptor and we are still using the http resource and if i have not shown this before you can go to to do service and look at this so the to do's resource here is the one that we are looking at which makes this call for the users to do so since this is using http resource which uses http client behind the scenes the http interceptor obviously is working because in our app config we have registered our http interceptor to be used with the http client this is why this whole idea of http resource is amazing because it does exactly what it used to do you know the interceptors you know the http client well and this is just a wrapper around that which is still allows us to code very less still achieving the same goal and it gives us signals which is what we want for the reactive paradigm today in angular with that said i hope this cleared the confusion about if the http resource can be used with http interceptors or not and i hope this video was useful for you if it was press the thumbs up button also subscribe to the channel if you have not already and i mentioned this before i'm going to mention it again i'm working on an angular signals book which will come out really really soon so if you want to get notified see the newsletters link in the description of this video and as always happy coding i'm going to see you next time